Thank you so much, um, Sister Joy and Rebecca Clement, for that uh, wonderful rendition, wonderful counselor and healer. Um, in the times like this, when so much is going on in the life of our loved ones, when words cannot express the way you feel, the hurts, the pain and sorrow and loss of loved ones, who do you cry out to? When life seems hopeless, who do you cry out to? When at night when you lay down, and you're hurting, you see your loved ones hurting, who do you cry out to? We have a God, a wonderful God. He's our savior, and he's our counselor. And in times like this, we can come to him. Jesus said in Matthew eleven twenty-eight thirty, 30, come.
Matthew 11, 8, 28, verses 30. Jesus said, I'm reading from the King James. Come to me, all of you who are weary, and carry your heavy burden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke up on you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart. And you will find rest for your soul. For my soul, my yoke is easy to bear. And the burden I give is light. Hebrew chapter 4, verses 14 and 16 say, So then, since we have a great high priest who had entered heaven, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold firmly to what we believe. This high priest is of our understand, our weaknesses. For he faced all of the same testing we do, yet he did not sin. So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy, and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. So this morning... What are you going through this morning? Are your burden, burden too heavy to carry? Give it to Jesus. This morning, we want to lift up our dear brother, Miller. Let us pray for a speedy recovery. So pray for his family. As you can see, he's not here today. I to. And let us remember our dear Sister Hyacinth Coakley family. It's a big loss, and she will be missed. So let us go to our burden bearer, Jesus Christ. At this time, please pray with me. The songwriter said, where should I go? And Lord, I come before you as humble as I know how, Lord. Just thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to be here this morning. Lord, you wake us up this morning. You have given us a reasonable portion of our health and strength, and we just want to thank you for another day. Thank you for another day we could see the sun shining, hear the bird chirping in the morning. And Father God, we thank you to be among our brothers and sisters in Christ, in this place where we can worship you, Lord, in spirit and in truth. Please forgive us, O oh Lord. Forgive us of our trespasses against you, Lord. Forgive us of our sin. And Lord, please empty us of ourselves. Help us, O oh Lord, not to get distracted by the world and the things of this world. But help us to keep our eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. And so, Lord, we want to lift up our dear brother this morning, Brother Miller. Father God, you know all about him. You know his needs. We ask, O oh Lord, that you will bless him in a very special way. We ask, O oh Lord, that you will heal him, O oh Lord, and continue, Lord, to provide his need right now and his family. 
Lord, we also want to pray for the Coatley family this morning. Oh God, you know all about them. You know all about the loss. Oh Lord, your son Jesus Christ came for us and he died on the cross. And Lord, you know what it's like. And so Lord, we pray right now, Lord, that in this time of sorrow, Lord, may you give them your peace. May you give them your joy. And Lord, may you surround them with the people that they need to encourage them and to uplift them, Lord. May they know, Lord, that you will never leave them nor forsake them, O oh Lord. Lord, comfort each and every person, Lord, that is going through a very difficult time right now. Many people are burdened by, the, by sickness, Lord. They're burdened. They don't have enough money to buy food. They're burdened by their loved one who's out there in this world. So, Lord, we ask right now, Lord, that you will intervene and that you will bring peace in the heart of your people this morning. Lord, we welcome the Holy Spirit in this place today. And so, Lord, keep us mindful of your healing power and your infinite love and your eternal salvation. And Lord, we pray for the pastor this morning, the pastor and his family. Lord, as you bring forth the word that you put in his heart, may your Holy Spirit open our heart, O oh Lord, to receive your word today. And may we never be the same when we leave this place. And in whatever we do or say today, May we bring honor and glory unto you. It all belongs to you, o Lord. It's all about you. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that I pray, and I thank you, Lord, for this day. Amen. 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 At this time... Uh, would uh, those responsible for lifting up uh, this uh, afternoon's tithe and offering come forward? Can I get some more volume um, here on this mic? Uh, for the past few weeks, uh, we've been working through uh, what I've called an, uh, a study on the origins of the tithe. Uh, and, and the first example uh, that we brought forth, it came from Genesis 21 uh, and verse 14. Uh, and there you find the first instance of somebody returning a tithe in the entire Bible. Uh, the Bible says that uh, Abraham, after uh, a great war, uh, he was met by a priest king called uh, Melchizedek, his name meaning king of righteousness. And uh, when the king of righteousness met Abraham, the Bible says uh, that he broke bread and, and, and gave him wine, and then he blessed him uh, in the name of Yahweh. In, in response to the blessing uh, that he received, uh, it was the, uh, that became the impetus or the catalyst for uh, Abraham then giving him a tenth or a tithe of everything that he possessed. Uh, and, and from that, we were able to make the, the inference uh, that the tithe is a sign that you have been blessed already. We went through this thing uh, 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 several times, and we talked about the tithe. Uh, uh, it's not something that you return because you are hoping to receive something uh, from God. It is not something uh, that you are using as a form of bribery onto God, but the tithe is a sign of what God has already done in your life. Uh, now I wanted to bring this text forward to give some more context to what the tithe, early origins of the tithe were. Genesis 14 uh, and verse 13. We've got it on the screen uh, for you here. Genesis 14 and verse 13. Uh, and there the Bible says, And there came one that had escaped and told Abram the Hebrew, for he dwelt in the plain of Mamre, the Amorite brother of Eskel and brother of Anner, and these were confederate with Abram. Now the words I want you to focus on is the idea that the text says that Abraham 
was a Hebrew. Uh, now this word Hebrew is important because the word Hebrew uh, in the text, it, it does not necessarily mean Israelite uh, and it does not necessarily mean Jew. It's an ethnic designation. Some uh, scholars say that the word Hebrew, uh, it could come from the word Eber. It could be a corruption of this word. This is one of the great ancestors of Abraham. Uh, others say uh, that the word Hebrew could come from the fact that he uh, uh, had journeyed across the water. Uh, no matter what way you choose to, to look at it, the word Hebrew, uh, it does not mean Israelite and it does not necessarily mean Jew. Uh, and one of the ways we can know this is because the Bible says that uh, uh, Abraham was from Ur of the Chaldeans, uh, which means that uh, Abraham was actually an individual that came from the country that is known as Babylon. Uh, I, I say all of this to let you know uh, that tithing, it existed uh, before the Israelites even became a people. God had already had this principle of tithing in the earth, and it, it existed uh, in nations all throughout the the ancient Near East as a way to bless God because of his protection and his provision uh, over you. So if individuals begin to speak to you uh, about it being an institution that has been wiped away uh, because uh, it belongs to the Israelite and such, uh, we have it here in the Bible that tithing predates or pre-exists the entire nation of Israel. Uh, that's something for us to consider as we tithe. And I want to let you know some of the ways that we are able to tithe and offer here at Temple of Praise. Uh, the first of them being, you can visit www.adventistgiving.org. This is what I choose to do. You go there, type in Temple of Praise SDA. Uh, we're, again, located in 1985 Green Road, Cleveland, Ohio. We're the one and only. You can give your tithe or your offering there. You can also go on the cash app, put in our cash tag, dollar sign, Temple of Praise SDA. Uh, in your notes, you can leave uh, how you're choosing to give. And when you leave that, the treasurer is able to receive that note and he'll know where to put it. Uh, you can also visit us if you're tuning in online or mail it in. Uh, again, we are the Temple of Praise Seventh-day Adventist Church. We're located at 1985 Green Road, Cleveland, Ohio. The zip code is 44121. Uh, again, we thank each one of you uh, for your sacrifices and giving, especially uh, those who have given to the windows and, and such. Uh, if you've seen in the back, uh, our own Deacon Williams has already ordered the windows, and they are sitting uh, right there in the back of the church. Uh, and in addition to this, we are in the process of receiving the quotes uh, for uh, our memorial plates that are going to go up. So uh, again, I thank you all for your giving. Uh, uh, and I know that God is going to continue to do wonderful things in our church through you. Uh, at this time, we can go ahead and pick it up. Bible says, give, and it shall be given unto you. 
and good measure pressed down and shaken together and running over shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure you use, it will be measured back onto you. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, we again thank you for your provision um, that has made it possible for us to give tithe uh, and offering. Uh, Lord, in this moment, uh, we, we tuck all even complaint away, uh, Lord, and even focus on what it is that you have already done for us. Uh, Lord, help us never to fall into uh, the mode of ingratitude. Uh, help us never to uh, uh, get lost in comparing ourselves to others, Lord, but help us always, Lord, be grateful for what it is that you have done for us. It's in the name of Jesus we pray, and let us all say amen. Uh, please remain standing for our scripture reading. Happy Sabbath again. Um, our scripture reading is found in the book of Revelation, chapter 21. That is Revelation, chapter 21. I'll be reading in your hearing. Verses 1 to 3. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the whole heaven and the old earth had disappeared. And the sea was also gone. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven like a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud shout from the throne of saying, Look, God's home is now among his people. He will live with them, and they shall will be his people. May you meditate on the word of God. Thank you.
Amen. Come on and put your hands together and bless the Lord. If you believe there is power in the name of Jesus, uh, for the name of Jesus uh, is able to turn the ordinary into extraordinary. The name of Jesus uh, is able to cause the demons to flee and disease to die. Uh, at the name of Jesus, uh, 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 the weak are made mighty and mighty are made weak. Uh, it's at the name of Jesus, um, uh, cripple folk are caused to stand. Uh, the wind and waves are caused to calm. calm. Uh, 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 at the name of Jesus, um, uh, even the mountains are caused to tremble. Uh, and I, I love this part. Um, uh, at the name of Jesus, um, every knee shall bow and confess that he is Lord. Um, there is power in the name of Jesus. Uh, so I'm thankful. Uh, for a reminder on today uh, in sign uh, and in song about the power that is in the name of Jesus. There is something about the name Jesus. Uh, now, as always, I come before you in the name of Yahweh, uh, for his name alone is excellent and his glory is above the earth and the heavens. Uh, all power and authority has he granted unto his son Jesus, uh, 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 and it's through the Holy Spirit uh, that we will exalt him today. Uh, therefore, God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be found acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and redeemer. Uh, greetings to, to everyone, especially those who I have not yet had the privilege to meet. Uh, my name is Renee Cannon. I am the pastor of this here illustrious Temple of Praise Seventh-day Adventist Church. Uh, I am husband uh, to one Dr. Afia Cannon, father to uh, Ryan Lamar Kwaku Cannon, who are both uh, with us today. If you might just wave your hand uh, for us one time. Ryan, you too, I appreciate you being with us here um, today. Uh, I know I've been supposed to start on this series from Mark for quite a while, but uh, every time I get in my devotion, God keeps showing me something else. We're going to get there uh, next week prayerfully. Uh, but I, I want to invite you to open your Bibles to the book of Psalms again with me. Uh, let us go to the book of Psalms. Let us go to the 46th division of the Psalms. Uh, and we want to consider um, today verses 1 through 4. Uh, we want to look at Psalm 46 verses 1 through 4. Psalm 46 verses 1 through 4. Uh, and I'm asking today that once you found Psalm 46, verses 1 through 4, once you see it upon our screen today, that you would indicate it by standing to your feet in honor and in reverence of God's holy word. Psalm 46, verses 1 through 4. I'm reading in your hearing this afternoon from the King James Version of the Bible. And the Bible says this uh, within this passage, God is our refuge and strength of every present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah. There is a river the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High God. Uh, and this this afternoon, uh, I, I want to lift up the title and topic for uh, consideration, Black Panther uh, Wakanda Forever. Black Panther Wakanda Forever. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Black Panther uh, Wakanda forever. Now, recently it was announced uh, that the movie Black Panther uh, Wakanda Forever uh, was set to be shown in theaters on November the 11th, uh, 2022. Uh, this film is the sequel uh, to the 2018 film uh, and box office hit Black Panther 
uh, which tells the story uh, of the people that inhabit the fictional nation of Wakanda. Uh, this nation is said to be located in the Elimi Triangle, uh, uh, bordering the nations of Kenya, uh, Uganda, South Sudan, uh, and Ethiopia. Uh, and for individuals who live in this territory and in real life, uh, they find that it is an area that is rich with natural resources. Uh, there they are able to, to harness the renewable energy. Uh, there they uh, speculate that, that it may be a land that is rich with oil. And uh, people have plans of, of putting many livestock uh, in this, this, this area or territory of the world. And it is for these reasons that the adjacent nations they all want to uh, seize or inhabit this parcel of land in the Elimi Triangle. Uh, now, Wakanda, uh, it is said to exist there, and it is comparable uh, to the real-life place. Um, uh, for Wakanda, just like this territory, uh, is one that is known for its own resources. Um, yet, the resource that we're talking about, uh, it isn't oil. It isn't a renewable energy that comes uh, from the sun, from the wind or from the waves, um, but instead the resource that we're talking about, it lied beneath the African soil, underneath the soles of their feet. Um, it was a valuable metal that was called vibranium. Uh, if you saw the last uh, Black Panther, then you know uh, that vi vibranium uh, is the metal uh, that revolutionized this nation, uh, for it was the vibranium um, that allowed them to have state-of-the-art architecture and infrastructure within their nation. It was the vibranium uh, that made sure that they were advanced in their aeronautical and transportation system. It was the vibranium that made it possible for them to heal even the most deadly of diseases and mend even the most broken of bodies at minimum time and minimal cost. These things were able to happen because they were able to maximize the potentiality of this metal that we call vibranium. Um, uh, however, one of the things that happened within this movie um, uh, 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 kind of parallels with what we see in history. Um, for whenever one of these African nations was known to have some resources, um, there would always be some people that were seeking to plunder and pilfer the country. Is anybody listening to me today? Um, uh, uh, this is why in history um, uh, we find that the nations in Africa, in Western Africa in particular, uh, they were robbed and raided of their human capital. Uh, these were lands that were overmined for their diamonds and titanium. Uh, this is the reason that the nation of Russia is in Sudan right now, still plundering that country of gold. It is the reason that the Western nations, um, uh, uh, they do predatory loans, um, which they label as humanitarian aid, um, all aimed at robbing these nations of of their resources because whenever it is found that these nations have something of value, there was always an outside hand that is seeking to pilfer, plunder, and pillage these nations. Um, uh, likewise, this thing was happening in Wakanda. Uh, for when people realized the value of, uh, of this metal, uh, they again began to try to invade the nation. Uh, however, these Wakandans were different than many people throughout the histories of, of some of these nations. For these Wakandans determined uh, that they were not going to make any backdoor treaties with their invaders. Um, these Wakandans determined uh, that rather than lay down, they would would rather stand up and fight against their oppressors. They determined that rather than be underneath the thumb of some oppressor, um, they would rather bear their own arms. Um, they said within themselves, we love our nation, our territory so much that we are willing to fight, bleed, and die for this nation called Wakanda. Um, I've seen some of the trailers, and one of the things that excites me when I see it is before they go into battle and they stand there in ranks, before they 
even step towards the enemy, the first thing they cry out is Wakanda forever. And the reason they cry out Wakanda for, well, forever is because they are stating um, that we love our people too much. Um, we love our country too much. Uh, we love our cultural traditions too much um, to let somebody take it from us. Um, therefore, just as Wakanda existed in the past, um, it shall exist in the present uh, and in the future uh, forevermore. This is why they cry out Wakanda forever. Um, and just looking at the pride that they had in Wakanda, it reminds me of the nativist pride that people had for the city called Jerusalem. Um, even outside of the Israelites, the city called Jerusalem, it was one of what we would call immense political and religious significance. And uh, Deacon George, the reason why it held religious significance um, is because it was the cultic seat um, for the Israelite worship of the deity that we call Yahweh. In, in fact, uh, nation, uh, the, the city of Jerusalem, um, it is actually the place um, that the Ark of the Covenant um, was situated or located. Um, for those of you who don't know, the Ark of the Covenant is a gold overlaid chest um, which symbolizes the literal and physical presence of God. Um, and even when the Jerusalem was sacked um, and the city was overran, um, uh, uh, the temple became uh, uh, the place um, by which they said God actually abode. And, and even when that temple found itself knocked down, uh, uh, the prophets of old began to say um, that the entire Jerusalem represented the throne or the living place um, of the deity that we call Yahweh. Uh, we can see this line of thinking even present in Ezekiel chapter 48 and verse 35. Uh, there the prophet says um, uh, that until this point forward, um, this city shall be known as as the Lord is there and the reason they called the city the Lord is there is because they believed that Jerusalem was the actual city that God himself lived in this is the reason they had the pride in the city of Jerusalem. Um, and, and, and when you understand the pride that they would have had in the city of Jerusalem, you can see the calls for angst in the 46th division of the Psalms. Um, because when you look at Psalm 46, um, what you actually see uh, is the psalmist declaring that there is coming a time in which this beautiful and holy city um, that we call Jerusalem, um, this city that that we call the city of God, um, the psalmist is declaring um, that there is coming a time uh, in which there will not be one stone standing on top of another. Uh, he is saying there is coming a time in which this city that you love so much, it is going to be completely and utterly destroyed. I know we usually don't see it like that because when we look at Psalm 46, we picture this to be a psalm of comfort uh, and of hope. Um, because of the first three verses that are found in there, the text says, God is our refuge and strength. Um, therefore, we will not fear. Um, uh, even if the earth be removed and the mountains carried into the midst of the sea, um, uh, even if the waters roar and, and, and shake and the mountains are tossed with a swelling thereof. Um, uh, we look at this and, and, and we say um, this is a psalm that lets us know that even if something were to happen, we are able to trust God. Um, uh, however, what I want you to see is I did some study in the Hebrew and, and what I found out is that the words even if do not exist in the text. We look at it and say, you know, even if these things happen, we will not fear. But the words even if or even though don't actually appear in the text. Um, in fact, when I did my study, I found it more appropriate to assume the translation of the New Living Translation, which says actually when instead of even if. Um, I need you to listen to me right now, um, because when you think about it this way, what it says uh, is not even if if uh, the earth be removed, um, but it says when the earth is removed. Um, it says um, when the mountains are carried into the midst of the sea, um, when the, the waters begin to roar, and when the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. Um, and I need you to see this. There is a difference between even if uh, and when, um, because even if um, it speaks to a potentiality, uh, it speaks to a, a, a probability or a possibility. Um, but when I say when um, it speaks of an inevitability, 
eternity, um, uh, which means what this text is saying is there is coming a time for sure in which the city of Jerusalem is going to be destroyed. And you need to hear this today. If we to, were to apply this text to our lives, what it is saying to us is that it is not just a possibility that you and I will experience tragedy in this lifetime, but it is a guarantee that you and I will suffer loss within this lifetime. Uh, you know, this is not something I used to fully be able to embrace. Um, I know it sounds foolish, but I used to imagine that because um, uh, I'm a pastor, because uh, I'm a, a minister of the Most High God and a servant of his people, that I was exempt um, for certain sufferings in life. Um, but 2020 showed me just like it showed many of you. Um, uh, in 2020, um, I put a lot of people in the ground that I never thought I would be putting in the ground. Um, in 2020, I, I went under the knife of a surging up. In 2020, I saw many horrors that I never thought that I would ever experience in my life. Uh, and what that year taught me is that God causes it to rain on the just and the unjust, um, which means that no matter who you are, you will find yourself experiencing some tragedy in your life. I, I need you to hear me today. Um, There are some things that you will cherish in this lifetime that will be taken from you. Uh, uh, some of you understand right now, uh, you have loved your health and taking care of your body um, but you know that just with one diagnosis from a doctor um, all of that can be swept away um, uh, some of you have made your living uh, putting away coins and investing properly uh, but just with one recession uh, one stock market failure um, everything you've ever had can be taken away um, uh, some of you have believed um, that you have had the love of your life um, but just one breakup or a trip to a divorce court uh, will show you all those things that can be taken away um, the Bible is letting us know here um, that it is not a possibility that you will experience tragedy. You experiencing tragedy is something that is bound and inevitable to happen. The text says that it's not even if it will happen. It's when it will happen. And I can kind of picture what the psalmist might have might have seen you know having lived down in new orleans that's a place uh, that is known for its natural disasters and such and, and and while i lived there i didn't live during uh down there during the time of katrina but i lived through uh, uh hurricane isaac and i i remember when the storm came um and in the morning after um uh, the skies the gray skies had dissipated and given light uh, uh, way to sunlight um but even in the sunlight everything that i saw was tragic um uh, for the water levels were elevated there were cars abandoned all over the world uh, uh, all over the road um you couldn't find anybody pacing or walking through the city i i saw trash and debris floating over the bridge instead of floating under it um and i imagine this is the type of devastation um that the psalmist saw when they were writing this psalm uh, and i know it had to bring tears to their eyes um just thinking that this city that they love so much was going to be brought to destruction. Uh, however, there's something that should bother you even more when you look at the text, um, because many times what we imagine is that it is the devil that is bringing all of these things uh, 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 to pass in our lives. Um, many times uh, we believe we are under attack of the enemy anytime something doesn't turn out our way. Um, but when you look at Psalm 46, the text says um, that the reason these things are happening is not because the enemy had something to do with it, but it says the reason it's happening is because God ordained it to happen. You see it right here in the text. Psalm 46 in verse 8, the text says, Come, behold the works of the Lord and what desolations he has made um, uh, in the earth. And, and I know this is uncomfortable for many people um, because we imagine God uh, as the being that always deliver us from uh, evil and hard times. We imagine that God will protect us from every single hard thing. And, and while that makes for good and fun, preaching uh, that God is not the God of scripture. 
Uh, you can know this in looking through the Bible. Uh, uh, when you read the book of Job, for instance, the Bible says um, uh, uh, that Satan was walking uh, from to and fro in the earth um, when, when God called out to him. Uh, uh, and he said to him, have you considered uh, my son Job? He started bragging on him how there is nobody like him. Uh, this is a man that hates evil. Um, this is a man that goes above and beyond um, to show his loyalty and devotion unto me. Um, and, and, and Satan see him doing all that bragging. Uh, he says, look, um, the only reason uh, Job worships you um, is because you got a hedge of protection around him. Uh, but touch his body and watch him curse you to your face. Um, now watch this. The Bible says um, that God himself says, go ahead and touch him. Uh, just don't kill him. Um, and I know we like to absolve God in the scriptures, but let God be God. Um, we point towards the text and we say that it was Satan that touched him. Uh, but you got to be real with yourself. The only reason Satan was even allowed to touch him is because God gave the okay. Deuteronomy chapter 8 brings another example of what this could look like. Um, for for when, when the Israelites were freed from the nation of Egypt uh, and they crossed the Red Sea or the Yom Suf, the Bible says that they began to tra traverse uh, in uh, the wilderness. And a lot of scholars say it only should have taken them 11 days to get out of the wilderness, but they spent 40 years inside of the wilderness until an entire generation had died. Um, but the Bible says um, they weren't led around for 40 years by the enemy, but the Bible says that it was the Lord that actually led them that route. Um, uh, it, just in case you still can't see it, the Bible says in Matthew chapter, Matthew chapter 4 and verse 1 uh, 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 that Jesus um, had just been baptized in the Jordan River. Um, and as soon as he came out of the water, um, the water was still dripping on him. Uh, the Bible says um, that he was led by the Spirit to be tempted by the devil, um, which means um, that sometimes the problems that we experience in this lifetime uh, isn't because um, the devil has a hold of us, um, but sometimes we experience the issues um, because God has a hold of us. Um, therefore, you don't need to get so down in your life when you're going through things um, and think that it's because God doesn't love you. God allows all of his people um, to experience trials and tribulations. He allowed them to go through it but even looking here there's a little bit of I guess cognitive dissonance or confusion in the text um, and I won't be long today uh, because when you look at the text three times in the text the Bible says God is our refuge when you look in Genesis chapter, uh, excuse me, in, in, in Psalm 46 and verse 1, the text says, God is our refuge. Um, when you skip down to verse 7, the text again says, God is our refuge. When you go down to verse 11, the text again declares um, that God is our refuge. Um, and, and just reading this and, and, and understanding that God is allowing desolation and destruction to come to the lives of his people, it made me have to go back to the dictionary and make sure I knew what the word refuge meant. Um, for the last time I checked, um, the word refuge, it means place of protection. Um, the last time I checked, um, the word refuge, it means fortified a fenced in city. Um, the word refuge, it refers to a place um, in which you're supposed to be safe um, from all hurt, harm, and danger. Well, if God is our refuge, how is it possible that God is still allowing for us to be hurt? To understand what these psalmists mean when they declare that God is our refuge, you must understand the theological context in which this psalm rests. For uh, many uh, uh, scholars, they identify this psalm as being a psalm of confidence, one in which it says that you should uh, 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 declare your trust in the Lord. And, and while I believe that to be true, uh, there's also a subcategory that it belongs to, and it's called uh, eschatology. Uh, this word eschatology, it means in time study. The Merriam-Webster's dictionary, they say that the word eschatology refers to the ultimate 
destiny or fate of humankind. Um, and, and therefore, what is happening in the text uh, is that Psalm 46 um, isn't causing you to look at the issues that you're facing today. Um, but what is causing you to do is to look forward down into the end of time in which God is going to rectify all that you see. Um, uh, and one of the ways that we can know this is by looking to the book of Revelation. Sure, you can find uh, eschatology in any book of the Bible, but the book of Revelation is the one in which we find uh, the most replete uh, amount of information concerning the end of time. Um, uh, and in the book of Revelation, there are a number of similarities to what we read in the 46th Psalm. Uh, for example, in verse 2 of the Psalm, the Bible says um, that the mountains will be carried into the midst of the sea. Uh, and in Revelation 6 and 14, the Bible says that every mountain will be moved from its place. Um, in verse 6 of the Psalm, the text says that the nations raged, the kingdoms were moved, and the earth was melted. While in Revelation 11 and 8, the Bible says um, that the nations raged, and the time came to destroy those who destroyed the earth. Um, Psalm 46 in verse 8 says um, that the earth would be made desolate. While in Revelation 20 and verse 5, um, uh, the Bible describes a period in which those who do not know the Lord um, would remain dead upon the earth for a thousand years, um, which means that again, um, that the entire earth would be made desolate. Um, and when you examine all of this, um, you find that the reason that the details of Psalm 46 match up um, with the details found in Revelation uh, is because they are describing the same event. Um, Psalm 46 isn't supposed to make you focus on the troubles of today. Um, it's supposed to make you focus on the deliverance that's coming when Jesus returns to the earth. And understanding this, we find that there are two primary reasons um, from the text why God is called a refuge in the midst of catastrophe uh, and calamity. Um, and the first reason that God is called a refuge in the text, uh, bless his name, uh, is because when he makes the earth desolate, uh, he brings an end to all of those that perpetuate violence upon God's people. Um, somebody should have said amen in this place today. Um, uh, for looking at the text, um, verse 9 says um, that he makes wars to cease to the end of the earth. Um, he breaks the bow up uh, and cuts the spear in two. Um, he burns the chariot in the fire. Um, and what this text is declaring today um, is that every form of violence that comes against God's people is going to come to an end. Um, I know you're tired of how people have talked about you, um, how people have kicked you down and dragged your name through the mud. Um, but this text is letting us know um, that one day um, it's going to come to an end. Uh, this text lets us know uh, that when we get to heaven, uh, there won't be any more war and bloodshed. Uh, when we get to heaven, uh, you won't hear any more gunshots uh, while you're eating dinner with your family. Uh, when we get to heaven, uh, there won't be any more news uh, about your classmates and your relatives being killed. Uh, when we get to heaven, uh, you won't even have to fear um, the weapons of warfare fair anymore um, because in heaven it shall be fulfilled um, that no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper uh, because when God breaks the bow uh, when he cuts the spear in two uh, when he bears a chariot on fire um, he is making sure that the weapons um, that are formed against you um, won't even exist anymore um, for God is our refuge um, because he brings an end to the violence that's being perpetuated on the earth um, somebody ought to bless his name in this place today uh, however, before I let you go, there's one other thing uh, that I want you to see about God being our refuge. Um, uh, and, and the reason that we can call our God a refuge, um, even though the city is destroyed, um, is because even though the land is desolate, um, the Bible says that God is going to make it again. Uh, look at verse 4. Uh, for the text says, there is a river um, uh, whose stream shall make glad the city of God, um, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. Um, this means that Jerusalem, the city of God, um, it shall be built again. Um, and if I can just pause parenthetically, um, this ought to give somebody some hope today um, because it is saying um, that even though there's some destruction you have experienced, um, even though life has taken 
taking you through some things. Um, God is able to make you over. Um, yeah, your health might be ravaged um, by sickness and disease, um, but God can bring you back to full strength. Um, you might have experienced some financial devastation, uh, but God can give you double for your trouble um, and big gains for your pain. Uh, you might have lost a house to a disaster, um, but God can enlarge your territory. Um, you might have lost what you thought was the love of your life, um, but God can introduce you to somebody um, that's bone of your bone um, and flesh of your flesh. Um, it doesn't matter what you've lost in this lifetime, uh, but God is able to make it up um, and he's able to make you over. Um, does anybody believe the word of God today? <clears throat> I tell you, I believe him. <clears throat> because that's what he does with Jerusalem. Um, for even though Psalm 46 um, says that Jerusalem will be destroyed, um, when we turn to the book of Revelation, we see the city of Jerusalem again. <clears throat> And the Bible lets us know that when God remakes the city of Jerusalem, it will be more immaculate than even the greatest cinematic film could imagine. Um, when God remakes Jerusalem, um, not only will it be better than Accra, um, not only will it be better than Dubai, um, but it'll be better than Montego Bay um, and Spanish Town too. Um, when God remakes Jerusalem, uh, New York City won't have nothing on it. Um, Atlanta won't be better. Um, and Decatur won't be greater. Um, when God remakes Jerusalem, um, not even the city of Cleveland uh, will be able to compare for it. Um, when God remakes Jerusalem, uh, it'll even be better um, than the city of Wakanda. Um, for though Wakanda had great infrastructure um, in the new Jerusalem, uh, the streets are made of gold um, and the gates are made of pearl. Um, in Wakanda, they had top-notch medical facilities, um, but in the new Jerusalem, uh, will even from the tree of life um, whose leaves heal the nation uh, in Wakanda um, they had top notch weaponry um, but in New Jerusalem uh, the generals will study war no more um, in Wakanda uh, they still worry about the poverty rate um, but in the New Jerusalem uh, our father's house has many mansions um, in Wakanda um, there is a constant struggle over power um, but in the New Jerusalem uh, every knee shall bow uh, and every tongue confess um, that Jesus is Lord um, for Jesus um, he is a way maker and a miracle worker um, Jesus um, he is a burden bearer and a heavy load sharer um, Jesus um, he's bread when you're hungry and he's comfort when you're lonely uh, and as long as I got King Jesus um, I don't need nobody else um, is there anybody else in this place um, that can't wait to go to the new Jerusalem uh, you ought to get about your seat um, stand on your feet um, and give God some praise in this place um, if you want to be with him when he comes back. Bless his name. Psalm 46 is a reminder that even though you've experienced tragedy, calamity, catastrophe, whatever you've gone through in your life, God is able uh, not only to make you up, but make you over. We, we've gone through a loss as a church, uh, but what we find in Psalm 46 um, is that there also comes a day in which the dead in Christ shall raise, um, and then those who remain upon the earth um, will be lifted up with him. Uh, this is what we look forward to. Um, don't get caught up um, uh, and let your faith slip because of what you see today uh, because there is something greater that we are all looking forward to. <clears throat> you believe the word of God, I want to invite you to rest on your feet. With me today, I'll be quick. My voice is spent, so I'll be quick with you today. All heads are bowed and eyes are closed Again, I'm calling that individual uh, who has given up on life. You've seen uh, some devastation, some desolation. You've given up 
uh, on life, you feel like giving up on God. You, you've come in this place um, uh, 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 as a last uh, 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 desperate um, uh, uh, heave uh, for help. Um, but today you have heard the word of God, all heads are bowed and eyes are closed. And you want to make a recommitment. You want the pastor uh, and the elders to pray uh, for you today. You are making a commitment that you will continue to trust God. I want you to raise your hand today. Amen. You're making that commitment today. I'm done. I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up. I know uh, that God is able to make me up and make me over again. I'm, I'm here to trust him today. I know yesterday wasn't what it was supposed to be, but I'm here to trust him today because I know that with God, things are able to change um, uh, 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 in a moment, in a very twinkling of an eye. And even beyond this, I want to be with him when he comes. You're here today. You're making that recommitment on today. Your hands are up with me today. I also make the appeal uh, for that individual that is here today. Uh, you have heard the word of God. God is calling you now to be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. You've tried it uh, your way uh, for so long, um, uh, uh, but you want to be uh, a part of that number when the new Jerusalem is uh, established. And, and not only that, you want to experience his goodness while we are right here on the earth. You want to be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. I'm asking that you have raised your hand. Amen. We are with you today. Amen. Is there another individual in here? You want to be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. God has called you uh, to be buried uh, in that watery grave. The Bible lets us know that when we walk out from the baptism, we are walking in the newness of life. You want to be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Raise your hand. Amen. And amen. I want you to meet me in the front pew. Is there another today. God has called uh, you. He has spoken to your heart. You want this relationship with Jesus on today. You would raise your hand to be baptized. Amen. And lastly, I make that appeal. You, you're here today uh, uh, and, and you've been in searching uh, for a place uh, of worship today. You want to join the Temple of Praise Seventh-day Adventist Church. Uh, you want to partner with us um, uh, as we uh, do ministry in this area of God's vineyard. You want to join us uh, by profession of faith. You want to join uh, by transfer of membership today. Uh, I want you to indicate it by raising your hand. You want to be a part of the Temple of Praise Seventh-day Adventist Church. Uh, you want a place uh, 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 where your covering might be. Some elders to call your own a pastor to call your own. You want to be a member of the Temple of Praise, Seventh-day Adventist Church. If you're tuning with the, in with us online, uh, just write within the comments, I want to join. Uh, you can write uh, 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 either, either a personal message or write there in the comments, uh, and we will get back to you uh, uh, as soon as we are able uh, to see it and check it. Uh, but let us go ahead and close our uh, eyes, or bow our head and close our eyes for a word of prayer. Uh, Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for your word on today. Um, Lord, that is that has made uh, uh, us to uh, 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 refocus uh, uh, what we prioritize in this life. Uh, Lord, for even though we see uh, some hard things in this life, the most important thing uh, that we can look for is being called up into the new Jerusalem uh, when you establish it. Lord, for we know that is a land in which none of the things that we see today we will see again. Uh, Lord, we know it is a land in which there is no more death, no more dying, no more sorrow, no more crying, not even any more or pain for all the former things will have passed away. Uh, Lord, help us to make our decision and hold firm unto you that we might be in that number when your son Jesus returns. And it's in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus we pray. Let every believer in the house say amen. Amen and benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Peace in your home, peace in your heart, peace when you come, peace when you go in Jesus' name. Let us say amen. Come on, let you put us put our hands together.